What's up, y'all? Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing a review. Well, I guess that's not that different. I've done a few of those, but this is a low whistle. It was sent to me by a fellow named James Dominic, and it's made out of PVC, as I understand it. And it's meant to be an affordable, kind of an entryway into playing low whistle, which is cool because usually they're pretty expensive. And I think it comes in about 40 euro, if I'm not mistaken, which is like 50 something, 60 bucks. To be clear, this is not an ad. Uh, I wasn't paid to do this, but Jimmy did send this to me for free, he and he asked me to do a video on it, and I said, sure, I'd love to, because I, I kind of like doing these reviews anyway. Plus, maybe I'm just a simpleton, but I like getting stuff in the mail from foreign countries, because it's, you know, it's got on post on here, it's got a cool little stamp. I don't know, I think it's kind of cool, and it arrived today, and we're going to do a review on it. First things first, we got to unbox, unpackage, open the pack, you know, whatever. Ooh. Check it out. So it is, it's made out of PVC, which, you know, I've, I've played PVC whistles in the past. There was a fellow named Glenn Schultz who made some fantastic ones. And I, I, I've given away a few of those over the years since I've moved on to other whistles, but they were some of the best I'd ever played. They're, they're wonderful. So PVC can obviously work great. I'm curious how this is gonna sound. Well, it's responsive which is a nice thing, particularly on a low whistle. A lot of times they can be a little breathy, um, which is not something I'm a big fan of, and that's really why I don't play it that much. I, I just tend to get more volume and more punch out of the flute. If you are looking to get into a low whistle, you're usually talking about a substantial amount of money. Uh, but this being so affordable, particularly if it's your first one, this is a pretty good way to go. Now, if you are playing indoors, that's another reason a lot of folks will get low whistles or lower whistles than just the high soprano D is because it, they're quieter. They're a lot more mellow. This is certainly no exception. And typically with that, you lose some of that responsiveness, but well, I don't know, this one's pretty solid. Now with low whistles, if you're not used to it, there is a bit of an adjustment in the, the finger spacing, obviously. So you're gonna wanna play with what they call the Piper's Grip, which is this. I'm pretty sure I've covered that in previous low whistle videos. The way I always teach people is put your pink or your pinkies, put your ring fingers on the bottom holes. So in this case, I'm playing left over right. Obviously it works backwards if you're playing the other way. Pinkies on these holes and then your other fingers just kind of fall naturally and they tend to just fall right on the holes. So you're crossing over the whistle. You're not, you're not doing this. You're not doing fingertips because this is tricky. Uh, uncomfortable and difficult. So this just feels a lot more natural. I take it back. It will feel a lot more natural if you give it some time and you stick with it. You're just gonna have much better odds covering the holes properly. It's, it's gonna be a lot less painful and uh, you're gonna have a lot more success if you give it a shot. Honestly, it's a lot more than I was expecting for the price that you'd be paying for it. I do want to check tuning right out of the box because that's one trick. It's not tunable. Not the end of the world, particularly if it's something you're using for practice. But if you do end up wanting to play with somebody else, it's going to be important. So let's check that. All right, this is a fairly unscientific test. We're using this free tuner app. I can't even remember what it's called. It'll do for the, for the purposes of this video, I think. So let's see what we got. Well, judging by this, it sounds a little sharp, which is not the end of the world, and you can fix it by one, kind of dialing your breath back, turn that guy off, or you can tape holes, which I haven't ever really talked about um, because it's not something I do very often. The whistles that I've got are tunable and I don't usually have to battle certain notes. For example, if you're F sharp, 
was, was sharp, you could flatten it by putting a little piece of tape over the hole below it. And that's kind of a, a trial and error kind of thing. You could, you could put some tape over it, just flatten it a bit. Some maybe you overshoot, you back that tape off and, and just, you know, a little bit goes a long way. But that's a way that you could solve that problem if it was important to you. That said, it's probably not going to be that important. Unless you're playing with other folks regularly, you can get away with it. And, and I would say that's probably your best bet rather than messing about with tape. Now, the last thing I want to do is compare this whistle to this one. This is made by Killian O'Brien. I got this in about either 1999 or 2000. And I paid several hundred dollars, pounds, punts, euros, can't remember what it was back then. I paid a fair bit for this because this is a, a high-end uh, professional instrument. For a huge difference in money, I want to see how this stacks up. This one is tunable, you can just see here. It's even got like a cork bit in the middle. So, like I said, very high-end instrument, which unfortunately I don't play that often because I just don't play low whistle that much. But just for comparison, here's the new one. It's a little arpeggio there. For one thing, volume is substantially higher. So a lot more volume. Now, one thing I will say, there's a bit more uniformity to volume with this one, which can be a useful thing, particularly if you're doing recording. It's gonna balance out some of the need for so much compression, which is, you know, that, that could come in handy. But you do get a lot more punch out of this, which if for some reason you felt like playing a low whistle at a session, volume is usually your friend. It, it's, it's helpful to be a little louder than quieter if you can. The other thing that I'm hearing that's a little bit different between these two is on the high end, the higher octave I should say, versus this one tends to have a bit more bite. That's not really a good thing or a bad thing, that's just a matter of preference. Uh, it's got some more of that, I would say, generation kind of sound, whereas this one has more of that OG Clark sound, where it's just got more breathiness to it, that the overall tone is a little softer. And it's one of those things where depending on what it is you want to do, if it's a recording project or if you're practicing in your house, those can be pros and cons depending on the situation. It's not really one size fits all with this sort of thing. Bottom line, I would say this is a pretty good buy. If you're looking to get into low whistle, if you don't have one yet, it's a great introductory instrument. It's one that you'll, you'll probably get a lot of mileage out of. My first low whistle was a Shaw, which if you've ever seen those, it's similar to a Clark in that it's conical, it's all one piece, it's got the wood block, and it's incredibly breathy, and I passed out almost every time I tried to play the thing because it just took so much air. That's not the case with this one, which to me is a huge win. Again, I know a lot of people like that breathy sound. I didn't particularly like it when it was at least to that extreme, mostly because it just felt nearly unplayable to me. This is not, this is perfectly playable. And for 40 bucks or 40 euro, that's a really good deal for a low whistle, uh, for, for something that's quality and something that, that could actually hold up and that could actually play well. You certainly don't have to spend three or $400 on a low whistle, especially if it's your first one. I would say this is a good value if for no other reason than because it'll give you a chance for a relatively affordable entry price to get used to that Piper's grip which if you've just played high whistle, you're not gonna wanna do that on this whistle. And it is gonna be a bit of an adjustment. It's just weird. It's gonna feel a little weird. But something like this for a reasonable amount to get used to that, that's a pretty good deal. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Do you like the sound of it? I'll link Jimmy's website down below. Pop on over there, check him out, see what you think. If you like these, you know, buy one. It's reasonable, it's worth it. And the cool thing is they ship pretty quickly. Uh, coming from Ireland to the middle of the United States, I think it was about a week or so, maybe a week and a half, something like that. So you'll get it pretty fast. And, you know, tell them I sent you. Actually, you don't have to do that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you won't care. It's fine. But if you like it, buy one. That being said, I'm giving this one away because I already have a low whistle that I don't really play. So there's not much point in me just sticking this on a shelf someplace and never playing it. I'd much rather go to somebody who's going to get some use out of it. So if you want to get it on the drawing, all you got to do is three things, same as last time. Give me a like, the old thumbs up. Give me a subscribe if you're not already. And again, as always, thank you guys, for those of you who are subscribed, that's really awesome. And the third thing is leave a comment. And what I wanna see in there is who are your favorite flute and or whistle players? I like to know who inspires other folks. When I'm teaching lessons, I like to talk about the people who, who kind of got me into it, who inspired me, who, who sort of shaped my sound, my style. Who inspired you? Who got you started playing this music? Let me know. So that's it. Do those three things. I'll randomly select a drawing in about two weeks. I'll post the, the, the date right about there, I think. Boop. 
that's when we're gonna do the drawing. So come back and check it out then. And good luck. See you guys on the next one. Cheers.